students, I am Wendy Fitzwilliam and I'm here with you again for World International Read Aloud Day. I am super excited to have this opportunity to read to you one of my favorite authors, Michael Anthony. And I'm reading The Holiday by the Sea. Ah, said the young doctor contently. He got up and looked along the road through the palm. Then he lay down on the sand again and smiled to himself. He was enchanted by the idyllic scene around him and his early morning swim had given him extra verve. He felt such a new man these days. It was as if he had asked for a new body and it was given him. Strange what a difference two weeks could make. Two weeks of peace and freedom and good food. All that he had been concerned about before were books, drugs, and experiments, and the environment he knew was the bustle and clutter of Port of Spain. There he spent his life listening to an unending stream of complaints. Complaints of pains, bruises, heart troubles, nervous breakdowns, rundowns, every possible affliction. He had examined and had prescribed for all. And in turn, he too had become tired and run down so that he felt he could continue no longer. And then he had prescribed for himself. But he had not prescribed quinines or injections or shake well medicines. No, on a friend's advice, he had prescribed one month at Mayaru by the sea. Again, he got up and looked along the road beneath the palms. He could not see anyone and he lay down on the beach again. He said to himself, join coming out. He rolled on the sand and then he got up and tried in vain to touch his toes, bending. He groaned and gave up. Then he raced down towards the water. He dived and swam underneath. Then he stood up and turned to look through the palms again. A wave curled up and crashed on him, tumbling, tumbling him many times over. Joe arrived at last. He arrived in his bathing pants with a cutlass and he and the doctor bathed together. A little and then, they went on their usual jaunts. They did not go following sane boats this morning. Instead, they went to a part called Lagoon Mahu, where there were low coconut trees with big green nuts. But after Joe took the trouble to climb, the doctor could only drink one. Joe was so surprised. He said, one doc? The doctor replied, Yes, one. I ain't able this morning, boy. Joe laughed. As Joe peeled one of the nuts for himself, the doctor turned and looked out at the bay. There were many sane boats out there, dipping and rising, and there were the froth-crested waves seeming to break over the boats. He was absorbed in looking at this, and Joe followed his gaze and said, Fish, Doc, you change your mind? No, not really. Let's give it a little rest today. The doctor did not like turning this down because he knew he s how scarce fish was in Port of Spain. But here, everywhere you turned was fish. Fish to go with fish. It was as bad as that, he smiled. He knew he was not being fair because this was also the place of chip chip and breadfruit and ground provision. He did not even want to think of food, but he wished he was not fed up with fish because with Joe following the scenes, he did not have to pay a cent. But the truth was the truth. He turned to Joe. What about Mr. Abraham? He coming this evening. The doctor was relieved. Mr. Abraham was Joe's friend and he always went hunting and brought wild meat. Now the doctor said to Joe, what about crab hunting? In the mang? In the mangrove anywhere, the doctor looked keen. Right. 
But you know you wouldn't get the bluebacks there, you know, right? It's all right, the doctor said. Drew picked up the cutlass from the sand. Let's go, he said. Then he dashed off. I'll race you to the river, he cried. The doctor gave chase. Crab hunting became one of the regular hobbies of the doctor and Drew. The doctor liked it for the fun and for the crabs. And he always got Joe's mother to make callaloo with crabs. And on these occasions at dinner, he licked his lips. For callaloo was one of the things he had not had since he was a boy. Now, too, the doctor began going hunting with Mr. Abraham. And what fascinated him, he called the wonderland of the woods. There he saw so many things that were new and strange to him. He learned what a manicou was, and, th and there was where he got introduced to a guti. That he had always read about. And one day he heard Mr. Abraham say, By Christ, I have to catch a tattoo today. And it flashed back to him from across the years that he had once seen a picture of a shelled beast, and below were the words amadillo or tattoo. He said to himself, and to think I was born in Trinidad. Apart from the wild animals, there were various herbs too that Mr. Abram showed him. He felt ashamed that being a doctor, he had not seen these herbs before. That is growing. In fact, his greatest embarrassment was to see senna pods on trees and to recognize neither the pods nor the leaves, because he did not realize that senna grew in this country. Yet, what he had come to this village for, he was getting and in abundance. He felt he had never lived so well, and certainly he never looked so well. His sunken cheeks had filled up as round as ever, and more than that, he had been gaining weight. But his weight was in muscles, not in fat. Exercise saw to that. He kept going hunting with Mr. Abraham, but now it was merely for the fun, not for the wild meat. For he had grown fed up of wild meat too, although he did not want to say so. But Joe noticed, and then he had to admit it. He said, Joe, you might agree with me, but too much of a good thing? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Joe asked. But you like it here? What? You asking that so easy? The doctor cried. You can't beat this place for a holiday. You can't beat Mayoro by the sea. But in the midst of his idol, the month ran out on him, and his stay at the seaside came to an end. Three long months had slipped by since Mayoru by the sea. The office at Henry Street in Port of Spain was going strong again. The young doctor was back and prescribing for all. At the moment, the patients and their complaints filled the waiting room. The doctor was treating patient after patient, and in the meantime, dashing in and out, sending for instruments, dispatching stretcher cases and the like. All signs of his last holiday had worn out. The cheeks were sunken and drawn and they, as they had been before. Veins were showing up on his hands and neck. His assistant came up and whispered to him. With a puzzled look, the doctor peeped into the waiting room. The assistant said, amused, came a long time now, said he wanted you. The little boy was there sitting on the bench in the waiting room. He was wearing the familiar striped shirt with a big patch in front and the sleeves threadbare. His tight khaki pants, ch chapped and discolored by the trunks of coconut trees, looked even tighter on him now and shorter, for he had grown a little. He also had his old brown felt hat cocked up on his head. Joe cut such a ridiculous figure that the young doctor could hardly believe his eyes. And yet, this was the same child that had fitted in so well with Mayaru by the sea. At this moment, with the doctor's head filled with medical problems, 
Mayoro was only a dream, in spite of the boy sitting right there. Only the patients and their problems were real. The doctor said to his assistant, Are you sure? He said he wants me. Are you positive? The boy in the waiting room heard the word positive, and he sprang up from the bench. Doc, he said, where are you? I only hearing, but I can't see you. Is me here, Joe? The uncouth voice reverberated in the surgery, and now the doctor had to step out into the waiting room. The boy ran to embrace him, the soiled hands on the doctor's spotless smock. Joe said, I ain't able with them. I left my arrow first thing this morning. I bring water nuts, wild meat, everything, even blue back. And he laughed aloud, the sound echoing in the silence around him. Yay! I hope you enjoyed our story.